Barthy, what are your thoughts on the Brandon Ayuk situation? We didn't really hit on this yesterday. Yeah, I mean, the Patriots should make the call. They should be involved, certainly. At the same time, I think this isn't one where you chase. This isn't one where you overextend. This is still a team that is building back up. They're in year one of a rebuild. They have a, a, a ton of needs left. If that price is going up, like you're not going to give up your first round pick. You're not in position to trade what could be a, a, a top five pick for a wide receiver that needs a new contract. They still need a tackle. They're going to need edge rushers. They're going to need another corner at some point. you got to build up the whole roster. Down. If you can get them for what's been the going price for these top receivers, which is a second round pick and then another day three pick, that move would make a lot more sense. But what I think people need to remember, because Brandon Ayuk's the shiny toy right now, right? He requests a trade. He's out there. The NFL wide receiver market is so oversaturated. There are three, four guys each offseason now want a new contract, want to get traded, etc. They they don't like their contract. They don't like their quarterback. They don't like their city, whatever. There are going to be other chances. You overextend yourself for Brandon Ayuk, you, you might end up really regretting that. Whereas if you wait, one, you get a better idea of what you have in Drake May, in the rookies you drafted, where your draft picks are, and some guys that need new contracts next year that could become available, DK Metcalf. Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore. I'd take Metcalf over Ayuk, pound for pound, so you could end up with a better guy if you wait. All that being said... So wait a minute. I, you just got to... Uh, there's a lot of information there, I know. Are you in or out? I'm in on making the call. <laughs> I'm in like I'm in for the right price, but I'm not overextending. I'm not touching that first-round pick. I'm probably not moving two seconds. If it's the, the Stefan Diggs trade, a second and a fourth, yeah, I would do it at that point, but... The other thing I worry about, I know he talked about Washington, which if Ayuk's traded, that's where he's going. The The Chiefs, Bills, and Lions are also teams I see lurking that could offer a, fit, a first. Now, that's going to be something in the 20s or 30s. And now you have to compete with the first, oh, first round pick, which becomes tougher. But as I was building to that, all being said, he's not getting traded. I don't think he's getting traded. They're going to give him a contract or short-term contract, move some money or something. The Niners are the most, one of the most Super Bowl or bust teams I remember watching in recent time. Kyle Shanahan is racing towards Marv Levy territory. He needs to get this monkey off his back. Mike, there are seven coaches in the modern era who spent 10 plus years with the team without having a Super Bowl on their resume. Sup? Seven coaches. I'll get you the list. Hang on. No, I, I, I want to come up with it. Okay. Se seven coaches who spent 10 plus years with their team who didn't win a Super Bowl. Okay, in, in, in what era did you say? In the Super Bowl era? Super Bowl era. Sorry, okay. not seven, nine. Nine. Nine coaches. Okay, okay. well, I mean, obviously, uh, Marv Levy's one of them. Yep. Is uh, Marv Lewis one Marv of them? Marv Lewis is another. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's going to be hard to do uh, in real time. One of them. I've got a couple for you. Andy Reid with the Eagles. Andy Reid with the Eagles. Uh, oh, so wait a minute. Even though he's one, he's still on this right. list. Right, because he, Being employed for 10 plus years without a, without a ring. Been employed for ten plus years on one team without a ring. Yeah. Okay. We're at three. Who coached the Vikings in the seventies? Oh, Bud, Bud, Bud Grant. Bud Grant. Absolutely. So Bud Grant. Bud Grant sort of is. He won a title like pre Super Bowl. He's a weird. He kind well, of. How do you win a, really. pre a title pre Super Bowl? He won an NFL champion. Like he with had who? a championship on his resume with who? The Vikings. It that wasn't a Super Bowl. It was an NFL. Championship. But you said Super Bowl era. He wasn't there for ten years. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. So that's confusing. why he wasn't. He's there. a, there's some guys that like we, like Mike Holmgren sort of counts. He was in Seattle for ten years without a ring, but he already had one. So I don't know how you want to count. This him. is already confusing. So, there's a, nine. A, Kyle definitive... Shanahan's got to win one. Yes. He'll or he'll be on a bad list. Marv Levy, Marv Lewis, Ted Marchabrota, Jeff Fisher, Dan Reeves, Jason Garrett, Andy Reid in Philly, Dennis Green, Jim Mora. Jesus, Jason Garrett was in Dallas for ten years. Oh yeah. Oh my God. He was cheap. That bum. And that's the list. Did Ooh, whatever Kai, the point being. Going to be on NBC for the next ten years. Kyle too. Shanahan yeah. is racing full full steam ahead towards that, and he's going to trade his best receiver for a second round pick. For the purposes of today, let's just say yes. Okay, because we've got a couple segments here on this. No, I mean, we, I I don't think the chances are zero. I'm guessing no, but I don't think the chances are zero. Okay, I the more I think about it, I'm out out uh, on the Patriots even making a call. Like, what? Why bother? I mean, would you get him for the right price? Like. Yeah, sure. Like that's you know that's a, a low bar there, Barthy. It's like sure, like him for a fourth round pick, and yeah, of course. So like, but that's not realistic. I mean, but to to get him, you're gonna have to give up either a first round pick or a couple of seconds. The the deal that uh, there's also the whole Matt Judon of it of could he get thrown in there? I don't think he would, but some people have 
talked about that. Okay, so listen, I, like uh, Gaspar on TV last night said, second round pick, uh, Kendrick Bourne, who's played out obviously in that system and in that offense and is out from out there. So you get a receiver back if you're San Francisco. And a third in 2026, that becomes a second if he uh, gains 1,000 yards or something, you know, something like that. So, you know, two seconds and Kendrick Bourne for Brandon Ayuk. I'm out. I'm out. It's too late. And to me, it's too late. It's like you had a chance to improve your team in the offseason when you should have. You had a chance to spend a little bit of money and improve that position group, and you didn't. And you could have gotten a guy like Calvin Ridley. Well, you think he's a whether you think he's a one or not, or worth the money he got or not. You had a chance to be the highest bidder, land a player like that for no draft picks out of your pocket. He could have been here starting in the spring, working with your guys, and you would have had a guy, and you didn't want to do it. So, no, you had a chance and you blew it. Or you didn't want to, or you didn't want to spend the money. So it's too late. I'm not giving up two high picks for Brandon Ayuk and then paying him thirty million bucks a year. Whatever that is, I love the player. It's not about the player. It's like, no, nah, too late. Yeah, you are what you are, and now you just got to sort of deal with it. I like the idea also as well of those other guys that might shake free. Are they all? Is Metcalf in like a, a rookie option year? So he's going into the last year of his contract, but this has been the trend now for four or five years. Most of these guys, when they get to last year, they want an extension, and the teams either pay him or trade him. Like they don't hit free agency. So Devonte Adams, right? So DK Metcalf wouldn't be a free agent until 2026. But you look at him as a guy who could be available in 2025 because he's going to want a new contract, and it's a new coach there. Their quarterback situation's uncertain. He's the guy I keep bringing up. If you because talk about to a fit with what Drake May wants to do, with what Alex Van Pelt wants to do, it just a stud. If you get DK Metcalf in here, you're we're going to be saying, remember a year ago when y'all wanted to trade a top 10 pick for Brandon Ayuk and instead you got DK Metcalf? Like, so no, I'm right. fine so waiting. A, a top 10 pick to me is not even, that's no. a n- non-starter to me. It's like, and and uh, I, you know me, just to clarify, like I, I don't get all horned up for high draft picks and I have no interest in the team sucking again and them drafting in the top 10. I, but, however, I need them making a first round pick. Like they still need a top 25 player on this team. I just don't care if they draft him 17th or 7th. Like, I'd rather them draft 17th, which means you've won some games and started to build something. But I'm not trading that pick, period. Like, no, no. You need to add young talent, and so I'm keeping that pick. And I, I like most people, I think you're really going to suck. Uh, so that's going to be a high pick. I'm not trading that for Brandon Ayuk. So it, doesn't Brandon Ayuk help you win, though, which is kind of your point. You'd rather win six games than five. So isn't this antithetical to say that you wouldn't trade, let's say, a second-round pick, which is what what's probably going to cost you, to get Brandon Ayuk? No. He might help you win six games instead of five. Isn't that inconsistent with your you know don't tank take? Not at the cost of the uh, the 36th pick. You know, I don't know. It's going to be a high pick. It's No, not at that cost. I, I, I would assign Calvin Ridley. And give him the money mm-hmm. and right. overpaid that. And he would have taken me from five or six wins to seven. And that cost me nothing. And I'm still making my draft pick next year. And all that is is chewing up non-existent phony cap space. Like, that one's easy. Speaking of which, you do have to pay Ayuk, too. You can't trade for him without knowing you can extend him. Because if you give right. that up for a rental, that's not great. Now, what if you extend him? I mean, I'm, I, I'm still, like, second round pick and a day three pick is where I'm at. But... I. Is he going to sign an extension here? That's another thing you have to consider. Yeah, if you put the right dollar figure in front of him, he sure will. Right. I mean, he's coming. It's obvious, like, contending is obviously not his number one priority. No, it's not. He wants to go to Washington. Well, uh, but it's not just that. He's on a team that's been on right. two out of the last three Super Bowls, and he right. wants to be traded. So if he cared about winning and going to the Super Bowl, he obviously wouldn't want out because that, that team goes every other year. He wants the contract. So he wants the contract. So, like, that's he's telling you he wants the contract. If you give him the contract, he'd want to come here. Now, is it like his first choice? Obviously not. It's Washington. And it's Washington because he played a million years ago with Jaden Daniels, right? At Arizona State, yeah. They're they're tight. Like, they've been friends since, but yeah. And he put uh, Pittsburgh on the list because why? I don't even know, I, I guess. He was at on Ryan Clark's podcast. Maybe he just wanted to Whatever. get a rise out of Ryan Clark. Because Pittsburgh's more of a destination than here. Yeah, and I, I don't know, maybe the coach is a draw or whatever. I don't know. But I'm out, out. You had it. You had a chance, and you didn't want to do. It. You don't want to pay the money, or you didn't know the market, 
or whatever the case may be. There were guys that moved, guys. You had a chance to improve your team when when the time was right, and you didn't do it. So that's it. that is what it is. You've got to make your picks. I don't care where they come. So like, I, I don't want to draft in the top ten because you suck. Uh, I, I I want to win games and draft in the teens, but you still I still want to make in that pick, McCarthy. And so I'm not giving up high draft picks to go from five to six wins. I just want them to have six wins. You know. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 985thesportshub.com.